Hi, my name is Confetta, and today, uh, first I'm going to move my chair, but today I'm going to be talking about feminism, Christian feminism. Um, interesting subject, but I'm seeing it more and more, and I wrote down what I thought it was. And what I've seen and I tell you what I wouldn't have probably given myself that name but when I look back um, I think I was this way though I wasn't the worker in the house that whole idea of me being the boss I think kind of was out of hand like how could I say um, I'm not saying the woman of the house can't make decisions, you know, I, I think there's a, oh my goodness, when you have a house and kids and a family, there's, there's millions of decisions to be made, but I think that with a husband and a wife, that there are certain ones a husband should make and a certain one that the wife would make. Now, you know, there's going to be, um, it's not going to be the exact same in every single household okay because there's different personalities and one may like to do this and the other one likes to do that but um you know I'm, I'm talking overall for the most part let's just say that okay hopefully maybe the majority because what I'm seeing happening is kind of disturbing and I'm, I'm putting it in the Christian realm because as far as with unbelievers, people that don't even know what the Bible says, or they don't know, you know, because that's kind of, well, it isn't kind of, it is our rule book on how to live this life here on earth and live it successfully and in, in honor to God, you know? So as far as non-believers, I really can't say because they don't know, you know, they don't know any better, but we do have the Word of God, and we're supposed to be reading the Word of God, and I do have a couple scriptures to put with this, because I think sometimes, I know what happened with me, and this was many, many years ago, there was this thing where the husbands and wives would get together, and then the husbands, I could, you can hear them talking, and they'd be saying, oh, you know, I, it's just, you know, whatever my wife says, I'm just like a little hamster on the wheel, whatever she says, because she's the boss, you know, or if somebody would say something and they'd say, well, go ask the boss, and it's like the wife, and you know, the women, we'd just laugh, ha ha ha, you know, and really, in all reality, I think we took that too far, and it was actually true, and the men just try to submit to the wives, and... I think because <laughs> this couldn't be true and I know it if you don't give the wives what they want they'll make your lives miserable I know totally heard that many times and um, I don't think that should be so I think we need to have this whole thing of who's the boss and I actually have a video that I wrote who's the boss <laughs> you know and, uh, if, you, if you're unclear about that, because women, especially now in our culture, even on women feminine products, I saw this, it says, you make the rules. And I'm like, uh, what? You know, it, it's almost just like something they want to ingrain in your mind. You make the rules. You are the boss. Woman empowerment. I am woman. Hear me roar. You know, and it started back in the 60s with the whole you know, sexual revolution and the woman taking off their uh, parts of their clothes. And, you know, it's almost like, really, you're disrespecting yourself. You're really putting yourself down. You know, like, oh, I can, it's, it's my body if I want to show it or I want to get rid of the baby inside of me. Which, that's another thing that bothers me because, really... It took two people to make that baby, and two people should make that decision, not just the one. You know what I mean? Um, I just wonder if the man ever gets a choice. And I'm not saying sometimes it isn't the men that want to do it, you know, and God forbid, you know, many people 
made mistakes in that way and probably really regret it. But, you know, this whole thing about I'm the boss and we're really not the boss. Number one, Jesus Christ is the boss if he's your Lord and Savior. Um, we have the Ten Commandments. Do you know what I'm saying? And, well, you're not going to hear in there about feminism, so to speak, but it does, there are scriptures in the Word of God, and we want to just put this in the right perspective, because I think this whole woman thing, where, you know, the women are working, and I'm not against women working, you know, I, I actually like working, but when you have children, it's, can you work and be a full-time mom and wife and mother you know where are your priorities like what is first place in your life now, obviously God but um, if you love me you'll obey me so if you're gonna obey the Word of God you have to obey the scriptures that talk about you know the husband is the head of the wife now why did God do it that way I, I, I don't know that's just the way he made it. I mean, in any business, anywhere, there has to be a boss. And it doesn't mean we've all had those bad bosses that were mean to us and, you know, just lorded that over us, you know, and took advantage of their, I was going to say bossness, <laughs> you know, and it, it puts a bad taste in your mouth or, um, you know, you may have had a, a, a father or a husband or an ex or whatever you want to call him or a boyfriend or somebody that took advantage of the fact that you were a woman. And then what happens is that it gives you a bad taste in your mouth and then so everything after that gets affected and all the other men in your life get affected by what somebody else did to you. They call that daddy issues. You know, a lot of times women will um, go through hard times in their life being affected by men in a negative way um, and then they take it out on their husbands who had absolutely nothing to do with it you know but they build up they call it these walls you know I'm not you're not gonna hurt a man a man any man is not gonna hurt me again or take advantage of me or act like he's the boss of me just because some people have taken advantage of their authority but that doesn't mean your mate should suffer the rest of their lives because of it. Or, you know, do you know what I'm saying? Because of something they didn't even do, but because you have issues there and you think, I, I can't tell how many times I've even heard men say that all women are alike. No women ever listens. You know, it's like they bulk everybody into a category because of having some instances. And I'm not saying they didn't have instances like that in their life. You know, obviously they've been hurt and maybe they're still struggling with unforgiveness or, um, you know, just, they just got an attitude about it and they just bulk everybody in and it's not really fair because usually the one you, your wife or husband or whatever, they didn't have anything to do with what happened to you in the past. Or if a woman had maybe boyfriends that were always cheating on them and, not very good to them if you know what I mean and then they get married to this wonderful person and then you're so oh I know because I've had this happen to me overly jealous because you don't want them to do what the, all those people did even though they never did anything but they have to pay the price for your uh, jealousy that came in because of what someone else did so we have to and that's another thing uh, it's kind of like this but not really sort of I think sometimes kind of let's let's tie this in I think that women become feminist or overly feminist you know is um, because sometimes of things that have happened in their life now if somebody does the exact same job and the boss wants to pay him the same that's fine oh well me none <laughs> yeah, you know, I mean, I don't really, you know, money is money, whatever. Um, but, you know, you have to realize, you know, women are not as strong as men. We weren't made that way. We weren't built that way. Women should take joy and, and be happy that God made them feminine. There you go with that root, root word. Being feminine is a wonderful, amazing, beautiful part of being a woman. 
we shouldn't want see things get perverted and i think the enemy does that you know he takes our 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 lovely emotions that we have because women are emotional but those are um to nurture to love to be compassionate not to be taken um in the wrong way you know what i mean and so i think that um you know we need to you know have all of this in the the right perspective as far as we are women and there's a wonderful part for us you know i think it's good to have a nice strong woman to help a man but and that's what we're supposed to be doing it's not like and what i'm seeing is it's like these women are trying to make their husbands the wife and they want to be the boss almost to a point of literally i did a couple of videos um just recently about narcissism and having spirits of control i mean where you just literally you, it's like feminism on steroids you know and demonic because that is not the way god that's not the natural order of what god intended it's like it's getting flipped and then society you got society out there trying to tell women they are men and men that they are women and it's getting all mixed up can you see this so if you see it in a little way somewhere you want to nip that you know that's not a good behavior in a home it's not good for kids to see wives treat their husbands like that and act like you know i'm the breadwinner so i make the rules you take care of the children now i'm not saying a husband you know shouldn't help out but here's the deal think about this if a husband could work and not have to always take care of the children because all the time that he has to take care of the children or clean the house or cook which is what these women are trying to get these men to do all the time you know you you get up and make breakfast or you you take care of the kids you feed them you bathe them you you know get up in the middle of the night with them and stuff like that and it's like i kind of like this okay call me old-fashioned but a lot of times when i'm looking for answers i'll look to the bible and again i'm not saying that men didn't ever play a place in in their upbringing or anything you know kids need a father no doubt about it they need his time and energy and influence but usually it's in training in teaching and yes spend time with them of course but when it comes to like cooking and cleaning again don't get me wrong some guys love to do that let's do the barbecue i'll take care of that or you know can i help you do something or whatever yes but it when you see it go extremely the other way where it's like they're more of the mom than the mom is the mom. Um, and see, this is what you're gonna run into when you have both people working, you know? Whose job's more important? Is it the one that makes the most money? Or I, I, does it really matter? Because here's the deal. Um, if, if you both wanna work, okay, who's taking care of the baby? Children. Who's taking care of them? If you think they can take care of themselves or you want to put them in the hands of another person, unless, of course, you have a family member that you are totally 100% know is good and competent and a good influence on them. Um, that's one thing. Not everybody has that. Are you willing to, you know, sacrifice that child for what? A big fancy house, a new car, fancy clothes um this is you know this is again do, you know this whole working thing if you're a single mom this is all the way different this is not i don't even know if it's really for you because i would have to say um you know you know god bless you that you're trying to work and take care of those kids and i you know what i'm saying that, that's a whole different story if you're left in a situation that and, and that's that whole thing we could teach on that that's another whole thing the breakdown of the family why are you a single mom you know what i'm saying it's just so
so many divorces and excess and you know leaving someone to fend for themselves but here's the deal there are instances when you have to and I totally understand that you know and my heart breaks for you can't imagine how hard that would be you know but God I applaud you for you know doing your best and working so hard to you know take care of those kids or child whatever but when you have you know you have two people working that could be there or or anyway I basically what I'm saying is you know they children need a mom they need both oh they need both this does not excuse the men if people get divorced or something that you don't take responsibility for your children I'm all for that absolutely positively you should the Bible says you don't take care of your children you're less than an infant doll that, that means somebody who doesn't even believe in God so take care of your children and um, but what I'm saying is, is the whole thing about even Christians, I see this, are doing this, where, you know, they want so much help from their husbands in child rearing and cooking and cleaning. And I'm just like, um, if the husband could work instead of having to cook and clean and take care of the child, maybe he could make enough money and you wouldn't have to go back and forth and back and forth and you know how, how do you do that it, it just seems like the roles have gotten either reversed or they're not defined you know you're the father you're the husband this is my job you're the wife you're the mom this is your job it's and, and again I'm not saying is it wrong with helping each other but the fact of the matter is, is it seems like the roles are almost getting reversed to where the dad is doing the things that in my, let's say Bible days, you know, I could be wrong, but from what I can see, it looks like the moms took care of the babies and the children and the dads took care of providing for the family. That's the way it used to be. You know, and again, I'm not saying women, when you're at home, oh my gosh, there's so much work to do between cooking and laundry and taking care of the kids. And then these days, I hope you're going to school them, you know. Um, you almost need to, because <laughs> I don't know if there's any kind of school. I don't even care if it's a private school. It's going to be, you have to remember, it's kind of like over the years how things get worse. You know, the movies today that are R um, were, wait a minute, how did that go? I was going to say they've gotten so bad over the years that the, the ones that were PG are R. But they're rating them as PG, but they are the R that used to be. And now the R are X, you know, but it's because everybody's so desensitized that they're kind of numb. And same thing with, I would say, schools. You know, I don't think a private school would be any different than public school. And then we all know that public school has gone completely woke. So that's done. And then, you know, your private school is going to be kind of like the public school now. You see what I'm saying? So it's like, who's going to school those kids? Who's going to teach them about the Word of God? You know, and I'm not saying you can't do that, but when you're so busy what is it you want that's more important than those kids wouldn't you just live in a shack if you had to to make sure they they had to, they need 24 7 care if you're not going to give it to them if you're both working full time who's gonna who's gonna be putting into them all those hours of every day is it worth the house the car the clothes the trips you sacrifice. You sacrifice. Is what you have worth giving up your child for? You know? Because then you think, I heard somebody say, oh, I'm working so I could be with you. And I'm like, hmm, how does that work? Because you could be with them right now. You're working so you can be with them? Because really, what you see is them buying bigger, big, better, nicer, and keep going that way and so how are you ever 
gonna not be have how are you gonna ever be with them if you continuously have to work to pay for the bigger the better the nicer I don't know how I got off on all that but this whole feminism thing is is okay what whatever happened okay I was doing a series called um, it's something about God is a supernatural God, but how, how to walk in the supernatural. It's like, you know, and I'm putting it out there. I'll be honest with you. I'm going to hit it with healing. I'm going to hit it with deliverance. You know, number one, the Bible says the borrower is servant to the lender. So number one, you become a servant right off the bat. And we wonder, is it God's will? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? We Somehow we just throw these things out. Why can't we believe God to be supernatural? Let he be your Jehovah Jireh. Okay? To where you don't put yourself in debt. How could that be God? You know? You definitely become a servant. The borrower becomes servant to the lender. You know? Um, because if only one of you work, you may not be able to have as much as you want as quick as you want, but doesn't mean you can't because I did. I mean, I'm going to say I did it. I mean, I didn't do the work, you know, but I saw somebody work so very hard and then I got to be home full time with the children and we didn't go without or do without. You know, you know, sometimes you have to be patient. You can't have the big fancy nice right away. And, and who knows whenever that'll come. But it's, it, kids don't want stuff. They want you, you know, nothing you can give them. And I even made a mistake at that going too far, too much. You know what I mean? Even though I got to always be there, um, but not being considerate to the person that had to work. And to, to have all that fancy stuff because I got off and I'm gonna do a video on the prosperity message uh, about that you know so again most of these videos I'm telling you were what I did wrong not what I did right I'm trying to teach people do not make the mistakes that I made so so much of this is not to condemn you it's kind of like one of those things that learn from my mistakes I don't want people to go through what I went through you know, God is always there for you. He's always going to help you. That I will say 100% all the time. You've never made too many mistakes. God will always help you. He'll always be there for you. But I, I mean, if I could help you avoid some of those pitfalls or whatever, um, that's what I want to help you to do. So the first thing is, is the borrower is servant to the lender. And what are you willing to sacrifice? I know this brings this feminism thing in, like women working and everything. And like I said, if you have to, if your husband has to go to school for a season, or or, or maybe he's in the military, or, um, or you're a single mom, or, you know, something like that, or somebody isn't able to, something happens, you know, like I know one that, you know, hurt their leg and couldn't work for a while or something. You see what I'm saying? That's a different... You know, and then here's the deal. Here's another thing. Even if you want to work, but you know, kind of women can always do a kind of little something on the side, you know, after their husband and children are taken care of. After your husband and children are taken care of, you have to keep your priorities. It's not, I'm a businesswoman first. I can't say that about men because they're supposed to be, but women, not, I'm a businesswoman first. And then, honey, if I have time for you, or kids, I'll, I'll let someone else take care of you. I mean, yeah, I guess if you have a family member, but still, and that's wonderful, and thank God for that, but not everybody has that. And, and how do you know if they'll always be able to do it anyway? Don't put yourself in a financial situation where you're dependent on two incomes, and that person that you think is always going to be there to help you. Things change. Seasons change. Don't put yourself in that situation, you know? So, you know, you don't want to have to sacrifice your child or your time with your child. There's nothing more precious in all the world. You cannot get that back. 
and there's nothing that's worth it. No house, no car, no trips, no nothing. And sometimes I think this feminism thing with women is a, is a situation that they feel um, that they had to be independent, maybe. They had to live on their own or they had family situations or they left their family and they had to go fend for themselves or be on their own and they had to be strong. They had to work. They had to make their own money, you know, or they were tired of being poor or they just wanted to make it, doggone it. You know, I'm going to make it and I'm going to make it on my own and I don't need nobody and I'm not going to have to depend on anybody. And, and don't get me wrong, that, that that's good. There's some good aspirations in there. But that may have worked then and it helped you then. And I'm telling you, God was probably helping you all through it. But when you get married and you have children, that you know, I am woman, hear me roar, and I am, I could make it, and I'm a businesswoman. And I'm right, I mean, it is fun to work sometimes, you know, or um, do good in business. I mean, who doesn't like to succeed, right? You know, but when it competes with being with God, well, definitely God has to be in there. Are you spending good time with God? Because if you are, more than likely you'll keep your priorities in line, and it's not going to be that you know, I'm as good as a man, and I'm as good as you, and I make more money than you, and I make the rules in the house, and it, you know what, I'm, there's that, that feminist thing going on. What would you call that, right? Because, you know, what it says in here about feminism, it's about equal rights. Listen to this, equal rights, equal rights, I'm sorry, women, we're not equal with men. Um, and, uh, it's about respecting diverse women's experiences, identities, knowledge, and strength, striving to, listen to this, empower, that word, empower all women to realize their full rights. Okay, empower. Okay, I've heard this before. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, you want to empower women. Okay, empower women to do what? Think for themselves, earn money for themselves, I don't know, live for themselves. What's the common denominator here? Self, self, self. And and sometimes that, that kind of breeds that selfish me attitude, I. When you hear that, you know, God is kind of like, we live for others anyway. We put other people before ourselves and definitely you're not equal with your husband. In love you are, God loves you the same. Your husband loves you as much as you love him, that kind of thing, that, that definite love and respect and honor, you know, for each other. But God had to put somebody, you know? <laughs> I don't know if it had something to do with Eve picking the fruit and eating it first and getting Adam to do it. I don't know, <laughs> I really don't. But the fact of the matter is, is when God makes a rule, it's a rule whether you like it or not. And it's always for our good. You know what I'm saying? I don't think women would really want the responsibility and have to stand before men and be responsible for all the stuff that men are. Do you really want that? Seriously, you might want to think about it. So anyway, uh, that whole feminist thing, you know, it's like I work, you know, I want, I, I want to make this family stable. I feel like, you know, if I I should make the decisions because I wonder if a husband would come to the wife and say, Hey, I think we should move here or there. Oh, what would she say? What if she didn't want to? Would she? Or maybe something like, you know, Oh honey, I want you to quit and be a stay at home mom. Ooh, oh my, would she, you know, or, Oh honey, I want to move and I want to move back home to be around the family. If let's say she doesn't have right there. Or whatever um, would she you know there's just there's just so many things it's like you could you can tell but let me tell you what this is though this is a spirit I know I always say that people are gonna say Jesus you know there's a demon under every rock well no not under every rock but a whole lot of them I mean call it what it is you know people got all these names for things you know narcissist I did a thing on that and feminism and and just all this stuff 
yes, there is a lot of times spirits behind that because it's not right behavior. Where does it come from? If it doesn't come from God, it comes from the devil. So if it comes from the devil, what is it? Okay? I call it what it is, right? Oh, brother. I don't know why people have such a problem with this. It is it's it is what it is, is what they say, you know? So anyway, um, my thing is, yeah, can a Christian be a feminist? Um, I think so much of it has to do with your heart and your attitude and how you treat your your wife. I think even a husband could be a feminist too. They said it's about equal rights, but I've never heard that put that way. They've kind of, you know what's funny when you look up in the dictionary now? They got stuff in there that didn't used to be in there. I, I heard a word. I couldn't believe this. It said um the dictionary, listen to this. The, the, and the sign for feminism is it's a clenched fist in, a, in like a circle with a cross thing. And then there's a fist in it like this. A clenched fist. Can you believe that? Oh, that doesn't show anger. I mean, who clenches their fist? I thought, oh, my gosh. I, don't, I, w I wouldn't even want to be called a feminist. And then it's, a, it says, it's the clenched, raised fist combi combined with a Venus symbol. And one thing I've heard about Venus, if you look that up, that's like some ancient Greek spirit god or something. If you look that up, um, it's an iconic symbol of the woman's liberation movement. That don't even sound Christian. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, it, it even had something in there about... Um, they're starting to put words in the dictionary or when you look them up on your phone, you know, whatever on your search engine, when you type in for the definition and they're putting words in that you know were not there 10 years ago, like non-binary. I'm thinking, that wasn't in there before. It's like, what are they doing? They're like trying to change definitions of things. Oh, it's getting kooky. But anyway, um, <laughs> I just think I'm going to say a couple scriptures and then I want to pray because I want women to embrace. I'm going to say that. Everybody else uses that. I'm going to say it too. Embrace your femininity. Not feminism. Femininity. Be proud to be a woman. Be proud to be feminine. Look like a woman. Act like a woman. You are a woman. You know? Not Don't, don't buy into all this, you know, equal stuff. I'm sorry, you're not equal. Not in the way they're taking equal and they're trying to put it in a bad way. But your love is equal. God loves you exactly the same. He just had to put somebody in charge because sometimes there's going to be decisions in life. And though the two of you may not agree, you must go with the husband. You know what I'm saying? Somebody has to be the boss. How many times have you been at a job and you didn't agree with your boss, but you had to do it, right? <laughs> or you're fired. Um, so, where am I at? Okay, I want to read this. Okay, could I be a Christian feminist? Um, that was good. I think I might name it that. I'm not really sure yet, but even before sin entered the world, there was still the principle of the headship of the husband. Please listen to this. I think it would be kind of hard to be a Christian and be a feminist. And I don't mean, you know, doing if you think you can do a guy's job. Um, maybe that's the position. You could have two cooks in a, you know, there's, there's cooks. There's women cooks. There's men cooks. I don't think there's anything like wrong with it, stuff like that. Please don't get me wrong. If you're geared toward, you know, you want to be out there working on the roads or something like that, and that's what you like to do, or a landscaping, you know, there's so many things, and that's you're geared toward that. That's what you love. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think it's when a woman starts to get that. Let's call it what it says, that raised fist, like, argh, you know, it's a, it's kind of what's in your heart, you know, and, and especially don't bring that in the house, you know, and, and use that against your husband and try to lord over him. 
um, cause that's not going to go over good. It, and it really goes against the order that God designed you to be. We have, what is wrong with being a mom, a wife, a mother? What could you possibly want to do that's higher or better than that? I mean, you want to talk about embracing your femininity? And, and being proud of who you are? What higher calling is there than to be the mother, the wife? What's better than that? That's what I'm talking about. You know, they, they, they put you down for staying home and take care of the kids and, excuse me, what are you doing? That's better than this. this. These kids are the next generation. They need all the love and care and attention that we could possibly give them. That's why what's happening with society out there because these kids are all left alone to fend for themselves and they're being taught by people that, that have agendas and, and, and don't really care about them. We're friends, they're friends. They'll learn from their friends. And gosh knows what, what's going on in their heads. You know, what fa kind of family they came from. It's your responsibility to train your children up in the ways of the Lord. And to teach them. Who better could they learn from than you? God gave them to you. Not to give to somebody else. He gave them to you. It's your responsibility. Anyway, let me go back to this. Um... Even before sin entered the world, there was still the principle of the husband or the headship of the husband. First Timothy chapter two, verse 13, Adam was created first and Eve was created to be a helper for Adam. And I wonder women, you know, you're like, you're here to help me. No, you are the helpmate. You were meant to help him do what he's called to do. And that leaves you to do what you were called to do, to be the wife and the mother of your home. Genesis chapter 2, verse 18 through 20. God has established several types of authority in the world governments to enforce justice in society and provide protection pastors to lead and feed the sheep of god husband to love and nurture their wives and fathers to admonish their children in each case submission is required citizen to government flock to shepherd wife to husband and child to father and even Genesis chapter 3 verse 16 says, Your desire shall be contrary to your husband, but he shall rule over you. Sorry if you don't like that, but that's what God said. Yeah, so fine. If you want to work and help him out, bless your heart. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. I wish I would have done that too. You know, because I think I could have had the time to do it, even though I had all those kids and homeschooled them and taught, taught them natural stuff and all this stuff. I could have helped instead of, you know, running around. Uh, uh, um, people always selling stuff. You know how girls do. They get together and they do that and, you know, stuff like that. You know, I could have. I could have helped. You know, I could have, you know, cleaned some houses sometime or I could have. Well, I wasn't good on the computer, but you can always do stuff on a computer. But we remember, we have to prioritize. Those children are first. And you have to have time and energy to meet the needs of your husband. You can't be too tired working all day that you can't meet his needs. And then you're too tired to take care of the children, so you have him do it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. When you get your priorities out of whack, then things start to go wrong. You want to make sure you get your priorities straight. So, um, now Ephesians chapter 5, verse 22 through 24 says, Wives, 
submit yourselves to your own husbands. It's right there, as plain as day. And you could say, well, oh, I don't like that. You know, well, if you interpret it wrong and you get it all fussy and everything, that's your problem. You got a problem. And if you don't do it God's way, try doing it your own way. Watch and see what happens. It never works. You know, it doesn't. Wives, submit yourselves to your husbands as you would to the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife. Did you get that? The husband is the head of the wife. As Christ is the head of the church. His body of which he is the Savior. Now as the church submits to Christ, so also wives should submit to their husbands in everything. Wow. <laughs> wow. Uh, you know, I'm just saying. You know, you could act like, I am woman, hear me roar. I know I say that all the time, but it's this whole women empowerment thing is, what do you empower, what do you want to empower women to do? Be women of God? Is that what you, what you mean when you say women empowerment? I want to empower you to you know, raise your children with the gospel and, and always watch over them and be there for them and feed them and nurture them. And, you know, is that what you mean by women empowerment? What do you mean? Or do you mean women empowerment? Like, oh, you know, whatever you can do, guys, I can do better. You know, I could beat you in that race. I couldn't, I'm, you know, I can be a better woman. I, I make more money than you. Or I, I, I'm a better business person and, you know, Without me, we couldn't make it or this or that or whatever. And because I work, you got to do this and that and whatever. And then you make the guy feel like a, oh, don't take advantage of a situation or somebody that is willing to cater to you. Because I'm going to tell you something that you got to watch women because that can kind of go into that narcissism, that controlling spirit, stuff like that. That is not how God made you. You know what I'm saying? And if you have issues from your past or what they call them, daddy issues, you know, and a lot of times women that come from, from uh, stuff that has happened to them in the past, I don't care if it's ungodly soul ties or, you know, multiple divorce, abandonment, abuse, neglect, all those kind of things, you're going to see them ha not like guys, but don't marry them because they got to have them. They have kids and, you know, they want to do that whole part but that all those little attitudes from their past or their things that have happened to them start coming into play and you can tell when you're around somebody if they got what you call i don't i don't know if that's a good word to call but they got daddy daddy issues and basically what that means is doesn't necessarily always mean from the dad it could be from their exes or even just ex-boyfriends or you know like i said ungodly soul ties or just you know a lot of things that have happened and they've built up walls and i'm gonna still though i had to make it on my own i'm gonna come into this marriage and i'm gonna make it on my own and though all these other men hurt me or abused me or neglected me i'm gonna you know i know i gotta have you but you're gonna pay for everything that every other man did to me and that's kind of what happens because you got this attitude or you got anger problems and those are spirits that come in and they're there and they will manifest usually when you're weak or vulnerable or tired or upset those things will manifest and then sometimes you'll feel bad maybe sometimes i say you don't even notice a lot of times um the other person will be like oh my gosh you know unless they're this super 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 sweet and nice person that puts up with it but you know I tell you what, I don't think God likes it. I really don't. And you might get away with it. And your husband might put up with it for a while or who knows, a long time. But what about God? What does he think? Are you submitting? Are you? I mean, and again, this isn't a marriage one. You know, it kind of seems like one, right? Um, I'm saying you see a lot of the feminism gone on, I call it on steroids. It, it's definitely gotten twisted, perverted. Um, it's not just, oh, if I work in, if I work on um, 
let's say I'm a postal worker or something, I should get the same pay as the guy that's doing the exact same route, the exact same houses, the exact same this. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that. You know what I'm saying? That 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 is that's different. I'm talking about bringing it into the home, and um, you know what happens out there. That's the way you deal with it. The bosses and the, what are you going to do about that? That's the way it is. You know, and they make the rules too out there, and I think that they are. But when you bring it into the home, that feminism thing really doesn't have a good place in the home. And I think it's going to come back and bite you. I really do. And to, to watch a woman do that to a man, it's hard because I know I did that. I wasn't what I would call a feminism because I didn't work. But I still had that I'm the boss attitude. And gosh knows where that came from. I don't know. You know? I really don't know where that one came from. But again, it's, it's not of God, doesn't please God. I don't know how we think we can get away with it and it's okay. As a Christian of all things, you know, we, we think these behaviors are okay. They're not. I gave you these scriptures here. Um, it, it, <laughs> women take our rightful place and it's a good place. You know, it, it, it's a wonderful place. I mean, what greater honor is it than to be given a child to take care of? You know what I'm saying? Is it, What is more important than that? And somehow that's gotten lost in all this feminism thing. You know, you want to work. And again, don't get me wrong. If you want to help out your husband, but you can't sacrifice your responsibilities of meeting his needs and the needs of the children and taking care of the house. You know what I'm saying? You have a, a good job. <laughs> Trust me. He'll keep you really busy. Trust me. But if you have a little bit of time and you can help him out, great. But get off of this woman empowerment thing unless you're empowering women to be a better wife and a better mother. Other than that, I'm not exactly really sure what that feminism thing is good for. Right? You know? How, how much more can you possibly be blessed by taking care of your family? I mean, what, what what's better than that, you know? It's like, why do you want to do what guys do? You're not a guy. And he's not a girl. You know, let's remember who we are according to the Bible. And you'll be so blessed. You will be so blessed. Do it God's way. <laughs> do it God's way. It sounds like a little song. But anyway, I want to pray. If you have that in somebody that you love, you see that. Um, it could be your mate or... But I'm going to pray. I'm gonna, actually going to pray for deliverance. I believe it's a spirit. I don't know where it's come from. Probably a, something from the past is what I'm guessing. You know, or It could be a generational curse. Maybe you see that in your family line where the women were really... Oh, you know, I'm, oh, I love men, but I hate men kind of type thing. You know what I mean? Like... You love them, but you make them pay for every wrong thing any man has ever done to you. You know, it's strange. And it's wrong. It's not of God. That's demonic. I don't care what anybody says. So let's pray for that. I'm going to call it the spirit of... of the, <laughs> I don't know what. Would that be feminism? But again, it's... it's Just when it's gone wrong. It's, can we say that? You know, if, if you see that in somebody's life and it's not good. And you see it having the wrong effect on them and the ones around them. Okay? Let's pray for that. And uh, we, want the, we want the natural, normal order of what God ordained in the home as the husband being the leader, as the husband being the one in charge. You know what I mean? And, you know, maybe not at every point in life, but the breadwinner, you know, taking care of the family and, you know, if a wife can help out if there's a situation, yeah, by all means, you know, but you can't shirk your responsibilities 
and say, you know, well, I'm working now, so you're going to do all the cooking, the cleaning, take care of the kids. I don't know. I don't know about that. You know, that's, I don't know. You know, go back to the Bible and see, what did they do back then? <laughs> that's, it's really kind of a good, um, a good place to look. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. Okay, check it out for yourself. But to me, when we don't really know, because, you know, it seems like as time goes on, so much changes, but it doesn't, just because it's a change, everybody gets all excited about something new and fresh and different, and even our attitudes, you know. But is it good, and is it right, and is it biblical? That's what you need to go back and check. Is this biblical? You know, what does God say about this? What does he think about this woman's liberation feminist movement what does he think you know that's what we gotta do so i'm gonna pray right now in the name of jesus if there's anybody dealing with this or a loved one you know dealing with this i pray for them if that's a spiritual issue we we cast out every uh spirit that's not of god that's a familiar spirit i command it to leave them now and you can name their name I command it to leave them now. And if it's you, I command it to leave you if you're struggling in this issue. And the thing is, a lot of times people don't realize it. They think they are right on track and I'm doing what's best for the family and this is what I do and, you know, don't notice it or realize it. And I pray if you are, that God would show you. Show you if you've got that going on in your life and it's out of control and it's not right. You're not following the natural, normal, godly, biblical order for the family. I pray for you in Jesus name and if that is a spiritual issue a spirit a familiar spirit you know operating in your life possibly from something in the past that made you think this is the way it should be I cast that out in the mighty name of Jesus in the name of Jesus and in the blood of Jesus by the blood of Jesus and in the power of his name the anointing in the name to break every yoke in your life to cast down every stronghold in your life in Jesus name hallelujah I pray for you or maybe you know somebody a loved one put their name in there we cast that out we join our faith together if two of us agree is touching anything it shall be done I'm praying with you <laughs> you can I'll pray with you I'm joining my faith with yours hallelujah and pray for them father I pray you fill them with your Holy Spirit fill them afresh and anew and help them to see the natural order of what it should be that what you want it to be you know <clears throat> of course it's gonna be a little different in each family but it kind of basically we know what it is the dad's the father the mom's the mother and they have roles to play and responsibilities before God each one of them so hallelujah and another thing if you're not born again I want to pray for you um, Acts 16 31 says and they said believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. So let's pray right now. If you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to give you that opportunity to do that right now. And just say, you know, Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I'm praying for you. Just say, I give my life to you. I've tried to live it on my own. I've made a lot of mess of it. But I'm asking that you help me. Clean me up. Fix me. <laughs> I want to live for you, Lord. God, I want to be your child. I put away my sins of the past and I repent and I want to walk free from that. I need you to help me. I'm giving you my life. I want to live for you all the days of my life here on earth and then forever in heaven. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. And if you, um, if you, um, you prayed that prayer, I just want to believe with you and make the Lord the standard of your life. Start reading your Bible every single day, okay? And uh, I pray God blesses you and thank you for watching. And until next time, God bless you.